First of all, I want to say thank you for being patient with me while I take the time to get these videos out to me uh, in a different little setup right now. So that's why this is coming out so many days after the first video. But we're going to take a look at Todd Munkin's red zone, well, low red zone situations. Because if you remember from last year, we had issues going in the, the low red zones and taking a lot of field goals or going for it on fourth down and not getting so I really want to take a look at what Munkin does in the from the 15 on in and see, you know, how some of those things could translate into what we do, you know, as the Baltimore Ravens. If you're new here or if you're not here, new here, hit the like button. Please do that right now. Subscribe if you're if you're new, have not subscribed. Channel still growing. And hit that bell so you can be notified when these videos drop throughout the rest of this uh, pre preseason. Or off season, whichever one you want to call it. But let's dive into Munkin's um, low red zone play calling and see what the Georgia Bulldogs did and see how it translates into what the Baltimore Ravens can do. This is versus LSU. I'm sure most of y'all know that. Get the little motion. Just a regular inside zone. They try to do some trickeration, but LSU defense never moved. They didn't. They didn't bump or anything. Just trying to come with a little inside zone, I think. Split zone. Trying to get some, some bells and whistles with the, this guy going this direction. This guy coming for the end man on line of scrimmage. Trying to get double team with that and trying to get up to that backer. This guy defeats the double team, which is what kills the play. And again, look at let's see who, who loses the double team. That's the center and the left guard. We don't know who's, who this is going to be for the Ravens right now, but we do know this is going to be Linderbaum. And I'm assuming that's going to be Cleveland, and that's not going to happen. You might beat him in other different ways, but just straight up manhandling, that's, that's not going to happen if that's Cleveland. Second down, now you got multiple tight ends. You got two tight ends and two receivers. A little whip route, the receiver falls. And again, we got, you know, you, this could be Zay over here running this whip route. You no, know, I personally bag up fast on this. So me personally would use this as Zay because he's the healthiest out of those young cats. I wouldn't I wouldn't do this with Odell because of the knee issues. I wouldn't do it with Bateman because of his issues. I would use Zay for this right here and maybe use Bateman to do. One of these other things. Yes, I would make this Zay Flowers. Again, because of the injuries with the other guys, I would have him running this whip route. Because this is a hard route to run. It's going to take a real short, uh, that, that stick right there. You don't want to change your older guys with that. So I have Zay right there. Maybe have Bateman or Odell doing this. Just a little over with your two tight ends. And it's something that can work. You know, Bateman is a good, I mean, not Bateman. Zay is a good route runner. This short area quickness is, is excellent. I can see, you know, him doing it. And you can come with uh, Likely and, and Mark or Kohler and Mark in this situation, especially around the goal line because Kohler is a taller receiver. You know, I can see, I can see this working. I can see this working, especially versus man coverage. But again, it didn't work there. Ended up doing it being empty. Definitely can see this working. I don't. But I don't think, I don't think the guy receiving can be Mark because I don't know if Mark's fast enough to do this. I don't know if Mark's, I don't know putting Mark here is fast enough to do this. I would say this would be likely. This would be Mark. This would be your other receivers, whatever two, whatever combination of two you want to use. But I don't think Mark is fast enough to to do this. And basically, just run a, a pick behind those guys trying to outflank them to the pylon. That's all it is because you know it's man coverage. And he just outflanked them. I don't know if Mark's fast enough to do that. Could be, could not be, but I do I like the call. So next series. I say, I don't think Mark's fast enough to do that. He may, he might be. I may be underestimating him. He might be. Yeah, this is the first in like two or three. 
two tight ends set. Just a little power room. Well, not not the actual play power, but like a physical physical power run, not the actual play power. And they just lose up front to LSU. LSU just whoop them up front, outnumber them really. They get all the gaps, get an extra guy in there. They come back on second down, give them a little motion. Stay in. Remember the the bunch sets from the first video? Did you get in a bunch set right here? See, bring the guy in motion. Goes in two by two. You got a little, little boot action. Darnell Washington giving somebody the business. You get eighteen or run that. You got that in the flat. And if I'm not mistaken, Darnell is gonna get that and then gonna delay and come right to this open spot. I think. Yep. See, look. And uh, he's in, but he beat Darnell there though. But you see both of them. Darnell trying to hit that open spot. He trying to hit that open spot while they widen everybody else out. I like it. It looks even better from the end zone view. It looks even better from the end zone view. Get your get your greedy on, buddy. Get your greedy on. I like the design. Cause this play you're thinking like the defense is trying to cover the flats and as wide as fast as possible and you hit him right up underneath it you hit him right up under look at him coming here he is right here and if he's covered then you got Darnell sitting trying to get in that open spot too both of them trying to work that same open spot Stetson Bennett knows it he's already looking for it he's his pie he's his pie because look how many defenders try to get wide look how fast they try to get wide let's see if I how fast I can go back See how wide they are? One, two, three, four. Because you normally you like the, the play with the play before. Where well, they tried to beat them to the pylon. So they're trying to prevent that now. That's how why they're so wide. Now you hit them with a counter and you come back underneath them. Because all this is a counter to the last play. A counter to the last attempt that you scored on. It's, it's counter punching. Which is another reason why I love Munkin and his thinking. Next series in the red zone versus LSU. Just simple. Inside zone or duo right up the middle. Got your two tight end set, basically an A set with the with the second tight end and an a H position. And you run the inside zone. That's all it is. The inside zone. Let the back be a back. Let him pick pick the right gap. See it blocked and hit it. That simple. And keep in mind, keep in mind, you got an X factor. You got an X factor. See, I had number three coming off this edge and gonna try to come down. Remember, this is Lamar Jackson Jackson. Jackson. So he's gonna be able to just fly down like that. He's gonna have to respect. Respect this, this right here. You have to stay wide and respect it. If not, Lamar pull it and hit it. You gotta use your imagination when we're watching these now. Because we're trying to Project Ravens players into these Georgia bodies. Let's go to the next possession. This is the James Prochet special. The James Prochet special, even though he may not be on the team. <laughs> this was for two point. This was a two point conversion. This is the James Prochet special. They reverse pass. I just needed a reason to, to insert Prochet into the video. That's all. Next play. Now versus Ohio State. A game they potentially could have lost. Again, got missed the tackle. And I think this is just inside zone. Maybe it's outside zone. Let's see. Oh, he got in. Forced his way in. Get that. You get two tight ends set. They running. That's inside zone. He just bounces it. The center loses. So he, that's why he initially bounces it. But then look at your, your tight end winning right here. Your, your right tackle winning right there. Morgan Moses and whoever the second tight end is. Then you're going to get a good block downfield by your receiver. Then he just got to outrun this safety. Or not. Nah, the receiver actually didn't get a block. He just outran everybody. Nothing wrong with that. Just find a way to get in. JK can do that. We all know he can. We all know he can. Uh, and what he did was he realized he couldn't beat that dude to the corner. And he decided just like, I'm going to stick my foot in the ground and get up in there. 
And with J.K., you know, 100% on his legs, he might can beat that guy to the corner. But if not, we know he can maneuver and get shifty and make guys miss. We do know that. Next possession. Red zone possession, that is. Toss. Toss. And what I want you to realize about this, look at 59, the left tackle. He don't really touch nobody, but think about this as Stanley. Stanley got great feet in open space. Great feet in open space. Just So just think about this as, as Ryan and Stanley. Stanley has great feet, great feet, and Stanley get out here and punish people. Especially like if, if this is the, if this play out the same way, and this corner got to go against Stanley, Stanley gonna obliterate this kid. He gonna obliterate him. He ain't gonna miss. He ain't gonna, he ain't gonna wobble with him. He just gonna run straight through him. Gonna run straight through him. He ain't gonna toy with him. Ten ain't gonna be erased. Cause Stanley got a lot better feet than fifty nine, and a lot, a lot more dog in. But then look, they come back the very next play. They saw something they liked. Run the same thing with the quarterback. And again, Stanley will obliterate this whoever's out there. Especially if they, they get in up with like a nickel or a corner or a safety. Stanley's going to destroy that person. But again, Munkin saw something that he liked and basically came back with the same play with the quarterback. And again, if Stetson Bennett can do this, we all know eight can do this. If Stetson Bennett can do this, we know for a fact eight can do this. Hell, if Stetson Bennett can do this, I might can do this. That might be stretching a little bit, but still, you get the point. You get the point. Next drive versus Georgia. They're on the eight. Got your two tight ends set. 84 is a receiver, not a, not a tight end. Get your toss over there again. You're just letting your back be a back. Just letting your back be a back. You got quality O line. You, you, you outflanking them because they didn't really move. Only person moved. 22 started here. He bounced out. That's it. So now you got numbers. You got numbers. You can go You can go down block. You can go down block. He can get up there. And, and if you, I don't know if you're pulling anybody, but you're outflanking people. Oh, and see, he goes back in the box when he come in motion. Even more so, you're outflanking him now. Look at that. Down block right there. He going to work up there. Now, it should be, uh, ideally, you'll get one-on-one -on -one with 12 versus the running back. Ideally. That's what you get. You know, this I don't know where he came from backside, but positive play. I like it. Got your bunch set again, remember? <laughs> they love that bunch set. Fake reverse. Now, this is, this is the, the drive that they did not score on. Again, I put the good and the bad in there. Because of this play, this native play, they did not score on this drive. They fake the reverse and, you know, try to little screen with it. Didn't work. And all, all plays don't work. You know, they happen. They trial and error. Whether it be user error or whether it be the defense, sometimes they don't work. Sometimes it be bad, bad schematic. Sometimes it just be wrong play, wrong time. But now it's third and goal. And look at all the defenders sitting on the goal line. And they're going to drop eight. So it's going to be tough for them to get it in there. It's a tough play. In this situation, it's okay to come out with a field goal. It's okay. Just don't turn it over right here. In this situation, unless it's like the end of the game, it's okay to come up with a field goal because that that play, that previous play put you in a bad situation. Again, them dropping 8 2. It's, it's eight people defending about 20 yards. Not even 20 yards, 15 yards. That's tough. That's tough. And most of them are going to work their way to right around the goal line anyway because they know you got to score. So, next series right here. Got your two tight ends. Oh, no, that's the same series. Hold on. Next series right here. Wide open. Two by two, which is I love. Look, the space, look at the spacing. Remember we talked about spacing in the last video? We talked about spacing. And every, they cover everything deep, which is good for, you know, Ohio State sport. Got your back involved. Got your back involved and gonna get you five yards. But look at the spacing. You got a guy here, there, 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 and there. Your spacing is good. You get five from your running back. Now you're looking at second and five. Second and five from the 10-yard line. You'll take that. Entire playbook. Well, your entire red zone playbook is open. Then your bunch set again. They love a bunch. You get the motion, which we saw a lot of that in the last video. The inverted smash, which I love. 
inverted smash, which I love. And normal smash. Normal smash will look similar to some kind of hitch or a whip by that dude. And a corner there. But what they do is, if I'm not mistaken, he runs out. He runs in and runs the corner. If I'm not mistaken, that's what happens. Let's see. Yep. He runs the, the slot guy runs the sit down, the short part of it. He runs the corner part of it. Stats and Bennett hits him on time. On time. The inverted smash. Simple concept. Basic football, but giving a different look. I love it. I love it. Zay, uh, Bateman, uh, Odell, Mark, Likely. I love it. Any of that combination of those two can run that. Any combination. And that's, you know, kind of what you're going to get out of um, Munkin and his low red zone stuff. You know, I could pick two good defenses, LSU and Ohio State, to see what he did versus, the low, you know, in the low red zone. And I'm impressed with it. Hopefully, we won't have to kick as many field goals. And will we have to kick some field goals? Yeah. Because some of the defenses in the NFL will be better than, you know, what we see here. And But the personnel, I think, as a whole, as, as a whole is better for us, even if it's just at the quarterback position. Because some of those situations where he'll call plays and they the defense may cover it, Lamar will get us out of those situations. So I'm content with what I think we'll see in the low red zone play calling from, from Todd Munkin. And again, I'm a big fan of Munkin anyway. So I'm excited to see what he does with the personnel. And looks like uh, Lamar's there learning the playbook. And and a lot of people, I, you know, and I'm thinking on Soapbox for a minute. A lot of people complaining and, 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 and bitching about these guys not being at OTAs. Y'all act like these people not working. Y'all act like Zoom calls and iPad and technology don't work. You don't have if it's not mandatory. You don't have to be in the same space. It's, you don't have to be. You don't have to be. Enjoy enjoy your life away from work, and that way when you come to work, it's about work. I mean, Odell got a newborn. Let let him spend that time and bond with his with his baby. Sheesh. Let, let them people live, man. It ain't it ain't football, you know. It ain't football, 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 football. Odell's toward the end of his career. He got a newborn. I don't even I don't know if him and Lolo married or whatnot, but let them enjoy that baby, man. And it ain't like he ain't working. You know he working. He just ain't working with the team. But I bet he I bet he got his iPad. I bet if he got questions about plays, I bet when that mandatory minute camp come there, I bet he know what he's doing. I bet that. And then the only person that can comment on, like, I saw a video about to my winners and losers of OTAs. The only people I'm going to respect that talk about winners and losers of OTAs are the people that can watch them practices. That's uh, Kyle Barber. That's uh, Jameson. That's Zerebrek. That's uh, Jonas. Everybody, if, if you did not watch, if you did not have a media pass to watch them open practices, I don't care what, who you, what, what you say is not bad. As far as winners and losers of OTAs. And is that a shot at somebody? Yeah. Well, not nobody that I've been on YouTube with, but it's definitely a shot at somebody or something or some group. But not nobody you never seen me on a video with. So peace out. <laughs>